Good afternoon, Floss Tube. How are you today? It's Friday, June 5th, and I am here to give you the wrap up on my mania and also share a little bit of stash and a little bit of fun information. No book reviews, sadly. I have several books I am reading, but none to say I finished and recommend to you. But so glad to be here on this very hot day. We had such a pleasant May in Texas, which is quite unusual for the heat not to come early. Well, that heat has come. We should not complain because we got a break, but it is, it is hot. So all activity such as exercise and yard work either has to be done early in the morning or after sundown at night, which is my plan for my long walk today. Hoping you are still staying well and that all your stitching is giving you lots of relaxation and joy. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go through my whips to show you what progress I made. I would have to say that Mania was a success. I did not touch all those old whips that I had hoped to touch, but I stuck with the plan in working on those whips with only two new starts. And one of the new starts actually occurred in June. So successful mania, have no idea what I will do next year, but we don't have to go there. So you remember this piece that I was working on for my daughter, way overdue birthday, because of the butterflies, which she loves, and the colors, which will fit so beautifully in her color scheme. And guys, I got the butterflies finished. Now, I did not get the butterflies backstitched. I started that the other night, forgetting that these dimensions backstitch instructions can be complicated. But I want you to see, without backstitching, how adorable those are. So both of the outlines of these have been done, but if you were to look at the pattern, you would see that there are lines and lines of backstitching that weave into those wings. So much more there to do. Then this whole big butterfly will be done with the black. Same thing. It will go around kind of like this start here, but then there will be those veins is all I know to call them that will go into the wings of the butterfly. But excited to get that much progress. As we've said before, there'll be a flower motif here, a little bit more to do here, and then we're finished. So I'm hoping that I will feel like picking this back up and get it finished before her August birthday. I almost even think I have some fabric in my stash that I could make this into a cute little pillow for her to hang on a doorknob or on a cabinet, but we'll see. I hope I can do that. Now, you know I had gotten all excited about a sow that I'm doing with my friend Donna because I had never done a Paul Vaughn. And I'm trying to remember if I mentioned on my floss tube that the thing that drew me to this sow, other than my friend starting her peas, was that Paula Vaughn is also from our home state of Mississippi. And of course, we had to look into that. And I know that I recommended to you Mary Rose at Stitch Bliss Corner, who has a whole video on Paula Vaughn. Paula is an artist if she's still alive. I hope she is still alive. But her cross-stitch pieces were distributed back in the day when, is this Leisure Arts? Yes, when Leisure Arts was publishing so much for cross-stitch. So this is the one I chose, which is called the Porch Swing, for many reasons. It reminds me so much of the porches in our hometown. I've always loved wicker, and the white wicker swing is just beautiful. And then the gorgeous setting of the porch. Looking at this makes me relax and just want to enjoy that swing. Maybe some iced tea and my stitching out on the porch. So let me show you how much I've gotten done on this. We try to work on this at night 
and let each other know that we're stitching, but sometimes we pick up something else. Because the thing about these patterns, you have to be able to see really well. And when you see these colors, you'll understand why. So this is the porch. What you're seeing is a lot of beige for the post and what I'm calling filigree, the little decorative part. And then over here is the window. So I am so looking forward to finishing this up here because at the bottom of the window, we're gonna have some blues and some flowers. I'm looking forward to that. This should not have taken so long, but it's a lot of stitching. And being sure you have the right brownish, beige-ish color can be challenging. But I'm doing it on my white even weave. Oh, is it 28 count? I think it is 28 count. But it's been so much fun. I like Paula Vaughn's designs. They're fun. They're different from what I'm used to working on lately. And if you look closely one more time, that picture makes my beiges and browns look like they should be gray, but I promise I'm doing the right colors. Um, you'll see that I'm going to some, some color very soon. So I'll keep you posted on that one. It's going to stay active because I would love to really make some good progress on that. Then you remember Cobweb Designs, another Mary Queen of Scots sampler, one that we had ordered from eBay after having seen it a couple of years ago in Scotland and not being able to buy it because they were out in the gift shop. So this one is another one of those pieces that I am doing because we love to have stitched pieces that remind us of a special trip or a special location that we love. So it is not, again, necessarily the type of stitching I always do, but as I told you, it is very similar to the Rosalind Chapel pieces that I did from Scotland and so it has been the nicest break because it is a basic cross stitch on Ada and the colors are simple to follow and I'm over halfway through except for the border. I kind of quit on the border because I got a little bored but I'll get back to it. So you can see that this is all finished, the royal crowns and the motifs and the, the letters representing queen, the years of Mary's birth and death. The one I'm working on here, which one is this, is called Jedburg. And obviously that's a small castle. Then the one here in the, no, 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 people, I get so confused. Yes, it is. Okay. So sorry. This is going to be Jedburg. This one is called the Hermitage. Not like the one in Russia, but it is called the Hermitage. And I had told you wrong about my palaces up here. This one is Falkland Palace. We did not see this. We would love to. This huge one is Falkland. This one is Linlithgow. So I was confused the last time I spoke with you. So over halfway through, there's the end of the piece, and then border, and I believe that what you see from here to here, that little section is what that border is going to look like. Quite an interesting border, but it's going to be appropriate for this piece. This will definitely be framed and hang with my Rosalind Chapel pieces. And once I finish this, I will pull those Rosalind Chapel pieces off the wall and remind you of those. It's on the same Ada, and the colors are even similar. But such relaxing stitching. And people, we do need some relaxing stitching sometimes. I mean, it's all relaxing, but sometimes you don't need to think quite so in such a focused manner about what what you're stitching, at least at the end of a work day. I don't always need to do that. So uh, let me now show you my new start. And I 
had a picture I wanted to show you and it's, there it goes. Okay, so, so short story. Two precious floss tubers, Stitch and Be Well, Mrs. Vinsel, and Stitching in the Light, Cynthia Brew, if you haven't checked them out, please do, invited me to our local Needlework Guild. And I had in the past told Rachel that I just didn't have time, and that was back when I was still caring for my mom. But this is a different stage of life, and so I went to the virtual meeting of the Guild this week as Rachel's guest and people, it was such fun to see all these women from all walks of life, all working on their projects. And you can do a show and tell where you send in a picture of something you finished and they showed that as a slideshow. But the highlight, other than that fellowship and seeing other people's work, which is exciting, was that Beth twist of heartstring samplery was a guest presenter on the guild so i got to see her virtually and hear her talk about a biscornu that she has designed for the guild which i hope to order and then we learned that there is a facebook group for heartstring samplery so i had to run join that right away i've tried to stay off facebook lately but i'm going to go to that group so I have several heartstring samplery charts that I had not worked on and I have the one new every morning that I need to pull back out that is her beautiful design but I absolutely had to, that night go pull out cross stitch nation because it's been in my stash and I said what better time than quarantine, dog days of summer, getting to see Beth on the Zoom call. What better time? Now the problem was I didn't have the specialty flosses that are called for, but there is a DMC conversion. So I pulled all the DMC that I had to use, but I also pulled a couple of specialty flosses that are not the ones called for, but they were some I had that I thought would fit and I'm so thrilled to get to use these. So this is Gentle Art Simply Shaker and it's called Green Apple. So I'm gonna use that one. And this is 7013 if that's important. I don't, I don't know if you need that. Then this is one that my friend Sam at Crafting Between Stitches had sent me. And I was saving it for something that I really wanted to do. Victoria Motto Sampler Threads, and it's called Kansas Sky. Now look at those two together. So the lady in the middle, which is where I started with the big skirt, huh, has a blue and a green. Not these, but these are the ones I'm going to use. So let me show you. I almost have her finished, and I am just thrilled with this fun project. I'm not sure even what I will do when I finish it, but here she is. Is that not the cutest? Her big old needle and thread. Now, I'm not through with her skirt. There are about hmm, five, probably nine more rows, five of which are going to be the variegated green, and then a couple are going to be the blue. And I need to stop wiggling. But isn't that going to be a fun, fun project? I think I like those colors. So I'm just kind of taking it one person at a time and picking my floss. And I am asking my daughter for her suggestions because she has such that wonderful eye for color. But this is the rest of my artiste linen from Hobby Lobby that I had gotten for my what was it? Maura Blackburn, the one I just finished. So it is not a fine linen, but it is a nice linen. And the color was just what I wanted. So there is Cross Stitch Nation, and I cannot wait to do more on that. I do think that on the border, where there's a lot of red, I'm going to pull a blue. I don't know which blue, I may have my daughter select that. But with the other P 
people. I don't know, guys. I may just play with it. This is kind of fun to play with. We'll see. I did pull the ones I had that are DMC, so we'll see what happens. All right, let me talk a little bit about some life goings on. I'm looking at my list, and then I want to show you my new stash. Okay, so what was I going to say? Oh, this precious daughter, who is my artist in residence consultant, is a university, a college instructor of art history, and also a student, a graduate student again, after having already done graduate school in um, education specifically, has decided after me picking at her for over a year to have start a booktube channel because she is a reader. Well, if you all love to read, please check her out and let her know that I sent you. It is under the title M M's Musings, and I'll put that link in the description box, but M period, M periods Musings, and you will just enjoy hearing her talk about the books that she's either reading or has read or is enjoying. And I know that you would have fun with that if you're a reader. So I wanted to throw that out there for you. And then I wanted to tell you a quick update on my roses. You know, we are doing the coffee grounds and we are watering, but we are not getting healthier. So my husband, suggested that I look up a natural spray for aphids or other bugs. And so we did, and I've got Dawn dishwashing liquid mixed with, what in the world did we mix it with? Vegetable oil <laughs> and water in a spray bottle. And I'm anointing them almost, well, it says once a week or after the rain. We haven't had rain, so I'm doing that. Still not seeing good progress, so we looked up companion planting, and I did make it to our local nursery, which is outdoors, so I wore my mask and felt safe enough. And I bought mint, the herb mint, which the bugs, and especially aphids, hate. It's a good companion plant for roses. And then I bought petunias. I've never planted petunias, but they are also a good companion. So. I'll keep you posted. We have petunias in the rose bed, and now we have mint in the rose bed. But we're not getting good rain, and we're getting a lot of heat. So I don't know where we're going to be. But help me cross those fingers for these poor roses. I really want to revive them if I can. I'm still cutting buds and enjoying them in the house, but the bushes don't look healthy. So eh, bad news there. Then one more thing I learned this week, which I have to share with you because I love to learn something new. I finished the Bothy Threads kit and on YouTube, I noticed that the owner of Bothy Threads has videos teaching you how to cross stitch and all of that. So one day I just decided I would watch her and her British accent is so delightful. And you don't need to watch her because you know all the tricks that she's sharing, but to hear her talk was just so much fun to me. Well, I had no idea what Bothy, B-O-T-H-Y, threads meant. So I was thrilled to hear her say that her business started as she designed cross-stitch patterns in a shed in her backyard and that in Scotland, these are called Bothy's. Now, can you see that picture? That is a bothy. It's like a little outhouse, like we would call a garden shed or a guest cottage. So her business started in her bothy in the backyard. And now it has expanded, of course, and she doesn't work out of her bothy anymore, but I'm loving that word. And I'm so thrilled to know what the little houses are called. And I wish I had the little floss organizer I had shown you before from my project, but on the top of the little thread card is the outline of a little cottage or a little house where it says Bothy Thread. So every time you see a cute little 
pool house. I don't know what else we would call it here. Mother-in-law, uh, granny pod, they call them. But in Scotland and maybe England, the little houses, cottages that are on the property, not the main house, are called the bothy. So fun, fun. It's my new word for the week. Okay, this is the exciting news of the week. I don't know if I showed you this or not, and I may have already told this whole story, so forgive me if I have, but for my birthday, I believe, could have been Mother's Day, my husband ordered this Hands Across the Sea sampler, which has been our favorite from the get-go. It's called the Old Scott, and it's been our favorite because that palace is speculated to be Linlithgow Palace. And the man in the middle is speculated to be Bonnie Prince Charlie. Well, he told me at the time that he ordered this that he had ordered the silks. And I was shocked because, you know, I don't stitch with silks. They're so expensive. But this pattern only requires, I believe, 13 silks. Let me count. Two, four, eleven. But you have to buy two of one of them, so it's 13 total. Well, the store from which he had ordered was out. So this little package came in the mail this week. All my silks, minus one, I believe, that's still out of stock, that's a duplicate of one of these, came. And I am over the moon thrilled to actually be able to say I'm going to do a whole sampler in silks. I cannot even believe it. So if you have any suggestions about stitching with silk, please tell me. I think I will do it on 36 count. I have not acquired the linen yet. And we'll use one thread over two because that way I'll have plenty of silk. And I believe that's how she recommends that we do this. Ooh. Well, no, she doesn't say. We'll see, but I think I will do the 36 count so that it won't be so huge. Maybe 32. But with 36, I would only have to use one strand, correct? So I'm going to pull out, which I'm sure you know will be my favorite color, and then maybe my second favorite. They're so beautiful. Isn't that so lovely? And I'm not going to try to pronounce these French silks, but they are the ones that are called for. Look at this peach. Isn't that beautiful? So I've really got to get some finishes so that I can start my beautiful sampler. And I know there is so much in this that I will be learning to do. I'm thinking if I finish my Rosewood Manor Summer Quakers. <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. I just need some finishes, so I'm gonna be working on that for sure. But just know that I am now the proud owner of a little package of silks for my beautiful Hands Across the Sea sampler, and we'll have to select a linen. I wanna go as close to what she has suggested as possible. I just think Nicola is just the one to trust. But, uh, so much fun. I feel very spoiled. I've gone 23 minutes. This is too long. I apologize for taking so much of your time, but thank you for sharing my excitement today about my new guild, about my silks, about my new start, and making it halfway through Mary. And now that mania is over, my focus is going to be some finishes and then looking forward to getting my linen and starting this beautiful sampler and also stitch what calls me because you know that's my fall to every time. Take care. Thank you so much. Come back soon. We are going to do that subscriber giveaway before this summer is over, even if COVID does not improve enough for me to go shopping, shopping. I will figure something out. So either the next video or the next, I will have a way for you to enter and we'll get that done. Thank you for your support. Please let me hear from you and subscribe if you haven't.